This is exam paper 2018, question one, 25 marks, and it is an algebra question. So part A says solve the simultaneous equations, and we have three equations with three unknowns. I have it up on the board here behind me. What we are going to do is we are going to label these equations one, two, and three. As you can see, this is an equation with only two unknowns. So we're going to deal with the equations one and two that have three unknowns, and we're going to get rid of the letter that is not in equation three. So we're going to get rid of, in this case, y. We have to set up those equations. We can't leave them as they are. So if I take equation one and I multiply by two, and I take equation two and I multiply by three, that will give me the same coefficient of y. Many people do this slightly differently. If you multiply by a minus two or a minus three there, that's fine. So whatever way, uh, whatever sorts you out with this here. So multiplying equation one by two gives me four x plus six y minus two z equals to minus eight. And if we multiply equation two by three, that's nine x plus six y plus six z equals to, don't be afraid to use your calculator, three by four, 14. So three by 14 gives us 42. Perfect. Now again, like, like before, over here, everyone would have a slightly different way of looking at this. We need to get rid of the y's. We need to get rid of the y's here. So if you had a minus six y here and added, that's, that's fine. But in my case here, I have to take the equations away from each other. So if I take the equations away from each other, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4x minus 9x. So 4x minus 9x is minus 5x. 6y minus 6y is nothing. We have minus 8z and we have minus 50. That now here is equation number four. We have two equations with two unknowns and they're the same letter. And now we can solve this exactly like junior search. We do have to set it up. It doesn't make a difference if you get rid of the z's or the x's. I'm going to get rid of the x's. If I take equation three and I multiply by five, that gives me 5x minus 15z equals to minus 65. If we now add these equations together, because we want to get rid of the x's, if we add these equations together, that will give me nothing, minus 23z equals to minus 115, and divide across by this number in front here, divide across by the minus 23, and we get that z equals to five. A big mistake on the marking scheme will be to stop there. So let's continue on. This is an equation with three unknowns. So or these are equations with three unknowns. We have z, so if we sub back in, we can now get y. Or we can now get, we can now get x, and then we can get y. So I'm gonna sub z into either equation four or three, show the examiner which one it is. So into equation three, I have x, minus 3z, so x minus 3 times 5 equals to minus 13. And if we tidy that part up there, we should get that x equals to 2. Grant. So there's our second value. And to get our third value, we must sub back into either equation 1 or equation 2. So if I sub it back into, let's say, equation 1 here, Fill in your, your uh, values for x and z. So 2 times x plus 3y, which is what we're looking for, minus 5 equals to minus 4. If we, where that x is, if we actually put in the 2 there, so we've got 2 times 2 is 4, minus 5 is minus 1. We can bring that across and tidy up. We get that y equals to negative 1. So there's our three answers here at the end. It is worth noting that they are whole numbers, okay? It is just worth noting that they do not have to be whole numbers. Uh, but this question itself was worth 15 marks overall, 15 marks. So 15 marks is a big chunk, 2.5% of your entire exam. In 15 marks, how do we get the low partial credits? If you match any one coefficient, or if you decided to use the substitution method and write it, wrote x in terms of z, if you just put it that way, that got, you, uh, that got you five marks for the low partial credit. If you match any one coefficient or start the substitution method that way, your mid partial credit would be if you found one unknown with errors. So if you got one of these but had errors, 
that gave you seven marks. If you successfully eliminated one unknown, like we have done here, that brought you the seven marks as well, the mid partial credit. Or if you just found one unknown and stopped, if we stopped here to the left of this blue line, we would still be on seven marks. Your high partial credit came from you finding two unknowns. So in this case, Z and X, that brought us up to the 11, uh, 11 marks. And to get the full 15, we had to have all three unknowns correctly found. Part B, and it's an algebra question, and it says solve the inequality. 2x minus 3 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. It says x is an element of or, but crucially I would underline that x is not equal to minus 2. So, first thing we've got to do is we've got to get rid of the brackets. In inequalities, when we get rid of the brackets, it's slightly different. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator squared, by x plus 2 squared. So slightly different in inequalities. What that does is allows the inequality to stay in the same place, but it also gets rid of the fraction. So our second line is x plus 2 by 2x minus 3, and that's greater than or equal to 3 times x plus 2 squared. Now we go through our algebra motions here, and we multiply stuff out. So on the left-hand side, we have 2x squared plus x minus 6 when you multiply that out. We square this out first before we multiply. So if we square this out first and then multiply, we will have 3x squared plus 12x plus 12. Brilliant. What we're going to do now is bring everything over to one side of the equal sign and it turns into a, it turns into a, nice, a, a nice enough quadratic for us. So we have 0 is greater than or equal to uh, x squared plus 11x plus 18. And if we solve that exactly like a normal quadratic, that gets us, first of all, our factors of x plus 2 and x plus 9. If you put your factors equal to 0, you get your roots. And the roots in this case are considered critical values. So we have the two places where this quadratic crosses the x-axis. We have to fit, we'll come up with a finish to this here to put it back into an inequality. Most people do this quadratic way where they do a little sketch. We know that it crosses the x-axis at minus 2 and minus 9. So we're looking for where is the quadratic less than 0? Where is the quadratic less than 0? So we're looking for these values here. And again, there are other ways for you to, uh, to finish this off. And what we have to write in from here is we know the blue line, blue part here is x, so that's to the right, so that's greater than or equal to minus 9, and that's less than or equal to minus 2. Now, what I would say is at the start of the question, they did distinctly tell us that x is not equal to minus 2, so you usually in a maths question would have to get rid of that to get full marks, however, in this year, they accepted this, even though technically it's wrong, but I would always, just to be sure that I get full marks, I would always just rub that out. Now, if we go through the marking scheme, this was a 10 mark question overall. It was broken down into low, mid, and high partial credits. So we have 10 marks overall, low, mid, and high partial credits. Any use of x plus two squared whatsoever got you the low partial credits. If you did relevant work, but you got a linear inequality, i.e. you multiply both sides by x plus 2 probably, you're stuck at the low partial credits because that is simplifying the question. Even if you did everything else, you're stuck at the low partial credits. So if you multiply by x plus 2 squared, or you did the whole question but only multiplied by x plus 2, that gave you 3 marks of this 10 marks here. For the mid partial credits, you would have to get down to a quadratic involving 0. Okay, so in our question, that brought us down to uh, brought us down to here, and that's mid partial credits of five. To get the high partial credits, you would have to find the roots of the quadratic. Okay, so the roots of the quadratic here, our answers, what we call the critical values, got us eight marks, and they would have to have some sort of finish here, like we do, to get ten marks. Now they did say again in the marking scheme, except that there, accept it. However, again, for full marks in the future, it is almost certainly 
only going to be this.